sorry, but I'm going to get emotional, but I am so sick and tired of it. Stop it. If you're going to do something, do it. Stop talking and back it up. I am sick and tired of it. Right. Right. And I know I'm not the only one. Right. And, you know, we all would love to just say things, you know, oh, this is a, this is a cause I can get behind. Oh, this is a what? Because the, isn't you know, human trafficking like a buzzword right now? Right. You are listening to Unravel with Natalie Denise. Now you guys know that I love my supplements that help me rejuvenate my skin, but I also love these topical serums that help me rejuvenate my skin immediately. This is Ageless Glow and it's done just that. It reduces dark spots, sagging skin, and crow's feet. This is a new serum that is rising in popularity for delivering a boost of youthfulness to user skin. Using this rejuvenating serum can provide smoother, firmer, younger looking skin in as little as seven days. If this sounds like something you wanna try, don't wait because they have sold out in the past and it can take a while to restock inventory. I'm warning you now that in case you go to their website and you see sold out, if you want it, grab it now. Yes, I've been able to nab a deal for you guys for up to 38% off when you click the link below or go to glowwithnatley.com today. All right, muchachos y muchachas, welcome back to another podcast. Uh, Today I am joined with an anti-trafficking organization, One's Purpose, one that I uh, do work with quite a bit and, um, you know, as well as I believe in. Uh, Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, What is going on? How are you? We are good. We're just in the the fight, fighting the fight. That's right. Right and left up in here. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so will you guys introduce yourselves, um, you know, your name and what you, what your role is in your organization? Yes, ma'am. My name is Joni Wilkinson. I'm the founder and executive director of One's Purpose. And One's Purpose actually founded because of this chica right here. Who is? My name is Hannah Wilkinson. <laughs> I'm Joni's daughter. I'm the co-founder of One's Purpose. Awesome. Nice to meet you finally. I know. (laughs) And then we have... uh, And I am Rhonda Riddle, and I am the president of One's Purpose. Awesome, awesome. So uh, we have been working together, more so myself and Joni. Um, You guys might not see a lot happening in the forefront, but there's a lot going on in the background with Counter Trafficking Alliance, especially with, you know, the approval process and everything that... Um, you know, we're, we're trying to get underway. Uh, but this is how I have come to know one's purpose. Uh, Joni just outreached to me um, within my start of counter trafficking alliance. And ever since um, she actually joined the board. Uh, so that's in route as well. Uh, but within this initial research into counter trafficking alliance, something that I've been learning a lot about the industry, which, you know, is an industry all its in itself, although you know the 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 T word, I have to say T word on on YouTube, but the T word industry is um dark, right? So it's got all of its evils, it's got all of its you know um antics, and that in and of itself should be the fight, but the there is also a fight with what people won't see within the counter. T word industry. And I think that that's an insight that a lot of people will not have, but Joni, why don't you explain? And, you know, if we want to pass it off to, you know, uh, to, to whoever wants to jump in, you know, why don't you explain what you have seen in your perspective and in your experience within your, your fight? Yes, we've seen a lot. We've seen, um, the good, and then we've seen the bad. And so we're out here. We are a survivor-led organization, you know, a lot like what you do, your boots on the ground, you know, at the border. And again, like you said, you support everything that we do. We're out here working with survivors, helping survivors on the daily. Um, there's no safe house in Oregon yet, but it is coming. But in the meantime, we are trying to relocate survivors and we lose them back to the game because of the process. So in all of that, 
we're out here doing the work, right? But then there's all these different organizations or people who want to join with us, join forces and say that they support us, however, have never donated one penny, one dollar, and even one dollar can go far. Right. Um, but they're, you know, that they support us, that they're, you know, come to our event, do this, do that. And then there's no follow up, there's no support. And then I know that Rhonda wants to speak to this piece as well. So I want to let her chime in and she just had a newborn baby. Oh, oh yeah, this sorry, baby. go ahead. <laughs> Hold on, just before you guys uh, go into Rhonda's perspective, I want you to let the audience know what you guys already deal with when you do uh, help survivors and what that looks like, the cost that it entails, the therapy, the spiritual you know, uh, journey, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I don't even see, like maybe there's medical costs and stuff like that, but what does it look like? So we can have a perspective of how you're already up a hill with, with helping survivors. So our, our biggest obstacle that we have with every, almost every survivor that, that we, uh, rescue is time. The time factor is extremely difficult for us because the lack of the safe house program and the reason for that being is is that there is a very short window of time to get these these survivors out of their situation and into a safe situation and because we have no safe house currently we have to put them in a hotel room for 72 hours Mm -hmm. before we can relocate them and that's not even how it works anymore. That was back before COVID. So now it can take up to two months for us to relocate. And mm-hmm. it's not happening as quick as it used to. I used to be able to relocate a survivor within 72 hours and fly them out of the state to a different program. Right. Now it's taking me two to three weeks to even get a response from other programs because so many have shut down from mm-hmm. lack of funding or lack of support. Um, so we're running into that huge issue right now. And in fact, just lost another survivor um, a couple of weeks ago because we were not able to move fast enough to get her out of her current situation to where we could, you know, get her saved. So we actually don't know where she's at currently. And she was actually referred to us by another caseworker within. So the government reached out to us. Mm-hmm. Hello. They have all this government funding. They have all this, but right. nothing, but they're reaching out to us who we, we don't have a lot, but right. yeah, we're going to try to do whatever we can do. So yes, like, like Rhonda said, we have no idea where she went in the meantime. And I'm sorry, I just wanted to interject that little piece there. So in a typical situation, you know, we have the cost of a hotel room for three days. We tend to put them in a nicer motel room area because the lower cost motel rooms are very triggering Hotel mm-hmm. rooms are triggering as is because that's most of the time where where they're trafficked. Right. So they don't want to go back to one. So we try to find a more home-like setting to place them in, which tends to be a little bit more expensive. So we have that cost for however long it takes to get them relocated. But then there's also the cost of, of um, immediate needs, uh, mm-hmm. clothing, uh, hygiene, Uh, The gas, the gas, I mean, we all know we're all experiencing the gas increase right now. So driving survivors around from, you know, Joni and I, in one's purpose, we go everywhere in Oregon. We're not just in our local area. We will sometimes have to drive to Portland, which is two hours away. So uh, the cost of gas, the cost of food, um, you know, it's a lot of essential needs that are needed at first. And then, you know, we have a therapist uh, who does a lot of work for us pro bono initially before we can get them associated with, you know, getting them on medical medical care, you know. So everything comes out of our pocket in the in the first initial, you know, weeks or months to get them situated before, you know, we can get them set up with everything. So, yes, it's extremely expensive and uh, there is an extreme need of funding that we don't have. And, you know, that's why when these other organizations out here that want to get involved and make all these false promises, you know, this is, this is where. It's um, someone's life that you're ruining just by saying you're going to help. So you're giving them that piece of hope and it's taken away. And then you're like, well, what do I do now? Might as well just go back. Right. So actually. Yeah, go ahead. 
I actually want to speak to her experience as well, because, you know, you've come out of the, the life, right? So you have, ex- well, actually, actually, both of y'all have, y'all, y'all both came out the life. But when somebody gives you a little glimmer of hope, how much impact does that have kind of elaborate on that piece that you guys were already going into like you you already are set up against you know an entire society that doesn't even understand how much it costs to i mean they people understand how much it costs to live but it's not to the extra uh, to to the extremity of a survivor because it's not only costly to live in you know a regular life, but now you have to amount all of this, you know, um, uh, all of this remediation with mental health, physical health, spiritual health. So when someone says, you know, I'm gonna help you or I'm gonna I'm gonna do this or that for you, what does that do for you initially? What what is that feeling initially? Well, first of all, it's really hard to trust anyone coming out of our situation that we first came out of. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like a, yeah, right. We'll see it from the get. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you, when people start using words, like, you know, this has been on my heart for so long, it's, it's, it's kind of its own manipulation tactics that they use, which is just as bad as the, the traffickers that use on us. It's and you know, using deep sympathetic words as far as, you know, this has been on my heart. I've I've had the, the soul for this wanting to help and you know, blah, 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 blah. It, mm. It's like they find their own way to to put yeah. hope into us. So when there's no follow through with that, it's another attack as is it's exactly what the trafficker would have did to me. Mm-hmm. And it hurts that bad because here I was vulnerable enough to trust you, to let my guard down, to believe that you were mm-hmm. going to provide that for me. So to be, it's like being re-exploited, you know, going through the process all over again, it's going backwards. Mm-hmm. And then to have me open up and share my, a little bit of my story about myself to you when I shouldn't have told you in the first place. Now I feel even more vulnerable. So the chances of me going further to get help or to want to get help are very slim. Now, thank God I'm already out of the game, but for somebody that is is up and coming and getting out of it, this is going to send them right back to their trafficker and and make it feel like, well, I'm getting treated the same way being trying to trust these people because they're not following through. They want it on their terms. They want it their way. You know, and it could be their only chance that they could get out because they can only they'll do it one time. And then if they can't find it, it's done. Like they'll just keep going the same way. So if you it's just like the first like impressions on someone and having that first moment with someone is very much need to get like everyone needs to get in order because that's like life or death situation. Like it's not a joke. It's dead serious. Like as soon as that like it'll like maybe take an hour or two just that little bit of time you can change someone's like life forever right. and if you don't meet it then you're it's, it's just the end of it and this is where i hope that more survivors come out and share their stories and their experiences within you know how this process happens and how you know people who make false promises towards us the organizations you know shame on you for that for one shame 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 because you are playing with someone's life and you are playing it's life or death for these women and these men and these children that are being trafficked and if you're trying to to gain clout for yourself or or oh i belong to this group so this is going to give me more followers or this is going to make me more famous you know shame on you for that because that one survivor put their trust in your, in your hands, that you were going to make right. a difference in their life, that you were going to give them hope to change their life around, which they deserve. Right. They, they are worthy of change. Right. They are worthy of having a better life. And you're stopping that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what if that was somebody you knew, or, you, you know, what, what if that was somebody close to home to you, you know, and they did it to your family. It's like telling someone, you know, we have the cure for your disease but we're not going to give it to you, you know? So we're just going to let you die. Like it really is a matter of life and death in these situations. And it's, it's, if you, if you want clout or whatever, go get it somewhere else. Don't, don't, don't play with humanity issues. (laughs) You know, these, this, 
Joni and I have always said, this is not a political issue. This is a humanity issue. Right. So I'm going to switch it to Joni. Joni, why don't you, because I'm sure by now my audience, the listeners are loaded up. Uh, they, they understand, or at least they have an idea. So what is a personal experience of you guys um, in which fuels you know, the, or it gives you these, um, these feelings that fuels these sentiments. We've had many people come and like Rhonda was saying, Hey, we support you. We're here for you. We'll do whatever. We've been looking for an organization for years to help, but we've never found one like yours whose boots on the ground doing people know what we do, that we are literally out here, you know, helping survivors, you know, fill up their gas tank so they can go and get a job. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we have so many amazing stories with that, but then people want to attach to that. And then people want to say, well, Hey, can you come over here? And can you speak? And can you do this? And can you tell your story? And like Rhonda and my daughter were saying, yeah, tell your story. That's, you know, that's great. But then what happens in return? They take your story, they use it on their platform, and then they try to twist it to where, oh yeah, we support you. And you haven't donated anything and not even donating, but come and help us come and ride alongside of us for, you know, a week, a day, whatever. Um, but it's been very hurtful. It's been very disturbing to where, I mean, patriots who want to, you know, and people who say that they love the Lord, but then they're going to come in and they twist scripture. They flip it to where it's all about them. And they're like, both of, you know, my daughter and Rhonda have said, there are people out here dying and you're just out here trying to look cool and be famous. Get out of here. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to get emotional, but I am so sick and tired of it. Stop it. If you're going to do something, do it. Stop talking and back it up. I am sick and tired of it. Right. Right. And I know I'm not the only one. Right. And you know, we all would love to just say things, you know, oh, this is a, this is a cause I can get behind. Oh, this is a, what? Because the, isn't you know, human trafficking like a buzzword right now? Right, right. And it, and it, because, you know, people are only starting to wake up to it. I would say within the last two to two and a half years, you know, for I'm sure yourself and myself included uh, for anybody pre 2019, who have been in the ministry and done things and donated and done on the ground things, you know, we've seen how the industry has transpired to like where nobody knew about it to all of a sudden now people are waking up. Now the, the thing is, what are you doing to help? You know, are, are you volunteering? You know, if you can't afford to donate, you know what I mean? And like Joni said, any dollar counts to an organization. So even if it's $5, what, um, you know, even if it, what is that parable with Jesus and, and looking at the woman who gave pennies in, to the offering where he was like, she gave more than this entire church because that's, what, that's everything that she had. So if you only have a dollar, give 50 cents, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it will come back to you through a divine blessing. Now, right. I'm saying all of that. It's not to hype up like donate, donate, donate. Although that is the thing that it's going to rescue the industry. The, the point that I'm trying to get to is you can't combat the, the, the dark industry by just words and affirmations uh, and future faking. And let me explain what future faking is. It is a term where an individual, and we've, all done it where you know you it's just some people do it more than more than others right but right. future faking is when you assure the other individual that you are going to do something or that you have a certain future plan for that individual or that organization and it never carries out now you can't reassure an organization with future faking and what I was going to also get to is you know, it's always nice and good when we're like, oh, you know, I share my heart with this, with this industry. And, you know, we want to help you fight and all these things. But for this particular industry, it's much more sensitive. You cannot do that where you, 
you say all these things and you make promises to leave an organization empty handed like that. You know what I mean? It's one thing if you never said it, like that's, that's another thing. If it's on your heart and all these things like cool, you know, but don't make promises and you know, it, it doesn't show through because this particular industry, it affects that organization. Right. Well, it's very traumatizing and relives a whole bunch of trauma that you don't even rem- like remember even having. Well, that's what I was going to was going to speak upon is we had a, uh, you know, an organization approach us. And when I first met them, it was, you know, a proceed before I even shared my story, which I, I have a stronger backbone, uh, but it's taken me a very long time. But it doesn't mean that I don't experience flashbacks and things when I share my story. But, you know, the whole reason I shared it was because I was told, you know, we're going to, you know, get you on our website and we're going to sell T-shirts and a proceed of our T-shirts is going to go to your organization, blah, blah, blah. And I believe that, you know, I believed all the genuineness in this conversation. So I opened up and shared my story once again. But every time, like Hannah says, that you share your story, you relive it. And each time you do, there's something else that comes up that you blocked out during that time. So I have to go home at the end of the day and process it, do EMDR therapy with my therapist. I have to deal with the panic attacks. I have to deal with the tears. I have to deal with the pain and the suffering and waking up in the middle of the night and, you know, hitting my husband because I'm thinking, you know, the monster's next to me because I am not in the right frame of mind. And, and this is all because I shared my story with somebody, but I, you know, I'm willing to go through all that if it means helping the next survivor, if that makes yeah. sense. So if I'm putting myself out there with the thoughts that some organization is going to help my organization grow and help the next survivor, I'm willing to do that because I want to help the next yeah. survivor never have to go through what I went through. But when we're taken advantage of like this, you're not going to, that's why you don't see survivors share their stories very often. That's why you don't get a lot of these situations. So once again, shame on you for doing this because you don't know how much it is to, to share when a survivor opens up and, sh- and, and that's an honor. People may not look at it that way, but it is an honor when a survivor shares their story because they're looking at you as somebody that they trust and they don't trust anyone. So for you to go and, and hurt them again, shame on you because that took a lot of courage, more courage than you would ever believe to put that trust in to, to you, to you specifically. And then for you to not follow through with what you said you were going to do is even more hurtful. And then to throw it, their story back in their face. Yeah. Well, it's not your story that made me want to help. It's the whole issue. Well, don't even talk oh, about yeah. my story though. <laughs> like this is not, you know, so. So we've seen a lot. <laughs> we've, seen, we've seen a lot and experienced a lot. So and, talk, talk about traumatizing. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, um, but keep that, keep that thought. Talk about traumatizing because or traumatic effects, PTSD after the fact, because people, generic audiences don't understand what survivors actually have to go through. It's as little as a scent, a scent of a candle that will trigger like, yeah. a survivor, right? Be Hannah. No, it's just like hard because like I, um, I don't know, like I'll have like sleepless nights. Like I won't remember. I'll just like wake up in the middle of the night, just like instantly just crying just because I can't sleep or just think of something. And so trying, and I don't like getting medicated because medicating, it doesn't work. It makes it worse or heightens everything. But even like at my job, if a certain noise happens, I freak out and I flinch and I have my fist up. Like it's just the littlest things just trigger you and you're trying to live a normal, a quote unquote normal life. And so when you have these issues, even if it's like anxiety, if you're plus anxiety or just depressed or anything, you look down upon because it's you're not normal. You're weird, as at least my friends have said. So, and triggers are really, you know, like the scent of cologne, the scent of a candle, uh, the wording that you use. Wording is very triggering. Um, when I hear, hear people say teamwork makes the dream work, 
it triggers me to no end. And that's a typical phrase that a lot of people say, but that was a part of the terminology that they used with me. It could be wording. It could be a color. It could be, I mean, a place, a, place, a, a physical place that you've been to. It could be a song on the radio. Um, you know, it, and it, it isn't something that happens overnight, the healing process, you know. I was kidnapped from 14 to the age of 22, and it's taken me over 20 years to get the help that I needed. And, and it took a lot of intensive EMDR therapy for me to finally be able to speak and share my story. But um, I was having panic attacks, you know, 10, 12 times a day sometimes. I was paralyzed in my house and couldn't leave my house for over 20 years and go anywhere by myself. I always had to have somebody with me. I, I would have fear, you know, panic attacks inside grocery stores. I mean, you don't you always ever feel like know. Someone, you always feel like someone's watching you. You never feel safe by yourself. No matter how far you've been rescued or how long you are in the process, you always feel like you have to watch your back or that, you know, somebody exactly what Hannah said that you are not safe. So once again, when, when you are having the opportunity to speak with survivor and they're sharing these things with you, you know, they're sharing their vulnerability with you. They're, they're telling you, okay, well, I'm going to give you a chance because you're going to make me feel safe or I feel safe with you. When you don't follow through with that safety, you're re-traumatizing them all over again. And would you would you do that to a normal human being on an right. everyday basis? Would you right. go up to somebody and, and do that to them? Even if they, like, is that your character as a person? Right. Like, I really hope people hear this and, and understand what they're doing when they do that. Right. And, you know, within the people of this industry who understand this, we, we wouldn't even put you know survivors on to speak without paying them because there's there is an understanding there that there's a psychology to that you know it's not just like you know you're, you, you everything we do is re-exploitation no it's like we have to put it in perspective with the society a working society you would hire motivational speakers you would hire you know educational speakers but especially survivors you know you want to put them in the workability of society, you know, without having them feel exploited. So it's even little as little as when you want a speaker for, you know, your cause or whatever, it is within the counter trafficking industry that you would actually give them the courtesy of being paid. Because again, it's not, it's not, it is about the money, right? It, it, it obviously survivors are trying to get on their feet. They're trying to build a new life for themselves. They they need something, but it's it's the psychology factor as well as you, you're not just putting them on just to re-exploit them just for their story, unless they're willingly wanting to do that clarification, unless they want to do that. So in this recent moment that you guys experienced, um, you know, how, how has this changed your perspective with, you know, how, are you more cautious about who approaches you guys? Uh, would you vet Well, them? I am, I've already been very cautious. I have a very good sense of, of, of people and in, in situations. She and, likes to say I was right. And uh, <laughs> I, I had a feeling about these situations before they even happened. And, you know, I did say, I don't feel right about this. Something doesn't feel right. And I let that be known. But I decided to put my guard down and yeah. give them the benefit of the doubt because right. I have to take a step back every now and then and say, okay, Rhonda, not everybody is bad. You know, there is some yeah. good left in this, in this world. And, but every time I've done that, it comes back to me being, oh, I was right. So now I'm even more cautious and I'm going to kind of tighten things up a little more. And, you know, it goes back to, I'll do it myself. You know, I'll go and sell water bottles on the street corner for a dollar a piece and raise my own money for survivors. I, I will do it myself, whether rather than have other survivors get hurt. Right. Or false promises. It's not right. worth it to me. No. I, you know, I, I passed up a lot of money. You know, we passed up $1.2 million from somebody 
that was willing to give us everything for our organization. But it was, guess what? It was bad money. It yeah, wasn't good. True. There was no good energy around it. It was all bad. It's not about how much money you have or your clout or who you are, or how many followers you have. It happens to do with the genuineness of your heart yeah. and for the mission. Right. And if you're really about wanting to help make a difference, not, you know, not get a bunch of money and be this millionaire because you created some 1-800 number that doesn't help anybody. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. you're an actual human being that really wants to make a difference in these boots in the ground, boots on the ground, it, you know, organizations. Uh -huh. If not, I don't want to, you know, at this point, I don't know if we're going to be teaming up with anybody very yeah. soon, <laughs> anytime soon, yeah. because I, it's it's just not worth it. It's, it's this is happening too much, too many times, and it sets us back for focusing on what we really need to be focusing right. on, which is the which is the survivors, the survivors that are still out there suffering. Yeah, and that's really sad that you know you have to have. I mean, we do all all have to have our precautions and our guards up, but it's sad that as an organization you have to heighten your senses even more to ex you know know who is being genuine and it, i mean it, it it is true you put your money where your mouth is like if you truly believe in this cause i mean as believers like we're already called to give right we're already called to um you know that we're free to give more than 10 percent if we want to like you know in in that there is a promise in in the book that you know that this is replenished back to us um, so that's our faith in God, right? Just speaking on a spiritual sense, but you know, you you really ought to think about, you know, how this money does downstream affect survivors. And you know, I, I just put that call out to people that, you know, you truly don't know if you haven't seen it on the ground, and if you can't see it on the ground go volunteer at a safe house to see the emotions that are behind each survivor, the struggles that they have mentally, spiritually, because they're there, they exist with every single one. And if, if you don't have that experience, that first one-on-one -on -one experience, you're not going to know where your heart's going with, with, with your tithing. You know what I mean? Like you, you want your tithing to follow your heart as well. And that's how I keep in perspective. And just for clarity, everybody, I have, I have helped one's purpose. Okay. I just want to put that out there. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, just uh, talk, uh, talk out of my butt, but you know, and, and that's, and the reason why I don't, I'm not flipping. And that's also a, a condition of the heart too. You don't want to just, you know, you don't see me saying like, Oh, here's my receipt for, for donating to one's purpose. Cause the word says, don't let your left hand, uh, or what is it? What don't let your right hand know yeah. what your left hand is doing. You're not, it's not supposed to, you're not supposed to boast about it for clout. You're not supposed to boast about fasting either. You're supposed to keep it internal. This is a thing that you have between you and God. But, you know, I'm just mentioning this because, you know, many people, uh, they, they don't see all, all the back ends of what is going on. But right. in the meanwhile, it should be like that. It should be that your heart knows where it's at with your spending, with your giving, and that's where it needs to be. Your heart and your condition with your direct relationship with God. And that's that's what I have, right? I'm just this is just a call out to the public that that's where your heart needs to be with your giving as well. And if you can't give financially, because, you know, there's times where I'm in a financial situation where, you know, things aren't good for the month. And I understand that. But you can still help. Hit us up. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't think that, you know, helping us get a newsletter out or helping right. us, you know, there's other things that you can do behind the scenes that are extremely helpful that can help a survivor. You can come help reorganize our clothing closet. You can help, um, you know, help us share a post, share, share a post. Um, you know, do, do a favor for us. You know, there's, there's so many other things you can do other than the financial part to help and be a part of, you know, you can, you can be there as a friend for a survivor. You can be a listening ear. You can have a cup of coffee with a survivor, you know, um, making them feel known and wanted is the main thing. Exactly. And listening to them, and, listening to them and, and, and letting them know there's no judgment and that, you know, they have somebody that is safe that they can speak to. Like we always say, $5 goes a really long ways because you wouldn't think that going and getting 
a survivor that cup of coffee at Starbucks that they've they've wanted. First of all, they're extremely grateful for that latte because they haven't had one in a long time. Yeah. And then second of all, you're having a conversation with that survivor. Like with a human being. With a human the being. Day, that's the thing. It's a human being at the end of the day. It's not some, oh, I hate when people use the word like, oh, well, I'm just going to do this to make myself be, like, feel better. Oh, I'm going to do this to help them out. No, it's not it's about not you. Help. Exactly. I'm like, it's not for you. It's for them. They have not lived a life. They have probably never finished high school. They probably never had social interactions. They've never gone out to parties, never done anything willingly. That's the thing. So them wanting to have that social interaction with someone is a big thing because I personally did not want to hang out with anyone. I hated people. I was like, I'm not going to talk to you. I don't trust you. Even if you invite me out here and there, no, I'm not going to go because I don't know what's going to happen. You just think about the majillion of ways to either back out of it or if you do go, find out all the exits to get out because you're just trying to do something because it's yeah. being normal. Right. So, oh. yeah, this is a valuable, valuable conversation. Joni, do you have any additional comments to that? Sorry. Thank you, everyone, for being patient with us as we're outside with the baby and all kinds of stuff. But no, I mean, they nailed it. You nailed it. And that, you know, you and I had a heart to heart from the jump because I was like, who are you? What are you trying to do? And you and I had to come to Jesus and you've done nothing but, you know, shown your heart and your mission and everything that, you know, we support you, you support us. And this is what it's about. We're the real deal. And we're out here doing what we can do, but we will not be re-exploited. You will right. not take our stories. You will not take our organization and use it for your own well-being when you've done nothing right. to support, not even volunteer. And like mm -hmm. we're talking about, it's not all about the money. Volunteer. It, Plain and simple. Things. Go exactly. go hold a sign. You know, we, we're out here holding signs once a month. You know, we got the schools coming out and doing it. We're in the schools. Um, it's been amazing. We go to the drive throughs around here. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you're the ones purpose people. We totally support you. And I mean, these are kids right. that are talking about it and just starting a conversation. So we appreciate you. We appreciate everyone that's tuned in and, you know, we can all do something and, you know, let's do it. Let's change the world. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think that this is a perspective that people should have moving forward. It, hopefully people, when they watch, this podcast, you know, they have a new understanding, a renewed understanding of, you know, what goes on a little bit. I mean, this isn't even everything that you guys have to deal with. I mean, I'm sure you guys can name things that are not even PG 13 R X, whatever, like, well, you when have you have a survivor, you know, who wants to hit you and punch you and act all crazy, you know, mm -hmm. you, that's a whole thing too. It's a lot. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not only that, that's like what, we risk we risk our lives yes. when we go to rescue survivors. We we don't know who is right. behind these these survivors. We don't know who's gonna pull a gun on us. We don't know who's gonna come after us when we go into these situations. Like we are literally risking our lives when we go and we answer that phone call at two o'clock in the morning yeah. with a with a girl or a young guy on the phone saying, I I need out right now. I'm on the corner of such and such and such. And we get in the car and we go and, you know, we are going off faith that we're going to make it, we're going to be okay. But we don't know if someone's going to shoot at us. You know, we have had our lives threatened. We get, we get our lives threatened all the time, uh, right. you know, of, of pimps and traffickers wanting to kill us and tell us to be silent. You know, there's a lot of ugly that goes on behind us. That's why there should never be any ugliness when it comes to wanting people to help us right. or join forces with like that, that is where you wouldn't think the ugly is happening, you know? Mm -hmm. So for it to be happening the way it is, is extremely saddening to me because we go through enough, you know, we're exhausted. We, we don't have this hundreds and hundreds of thousands of funding, you know, we're going off, uh, you know, hundred here, a hundred there. And, you know, we re we utilize it the best we can, you know? We're, we're just an organ, a smaller organization out here fighting blood, sweat, and tears to make it happen to the best we can. But, you know, everything we do is, is difficult. It's not easy. You know, it's not cakewalk, you know, yeah. um, from the start of the process to the end of the process to even the following up, you know, you never know. Um, 
you know, what a survivor's going through. We deal with panic attacks. We deal with, well, I don't want to go. You know, we get, we, we get them relocated. They decide they don't like the place. So then we have to figure out relocating them again, which means another plane ticket, another, you know, how are we going to come up with a plane ticket? How are we going to come up with this? You know, there's so much more background stuff. And we can go people, on and on. Yeah, and we could go on forever on that. <laughs> so, we can uh, tell you all kinds of stories for days, but it's, yeah, it's a real deal, real life. And we're not going to stop. We won't stop. We'll figure it out. And just because we're women, and I never want to make this a, a women or a man type of issue, but don't ever think just because it's a, a female organization with not a lot of men behind us that we're vulnerable or that we don't know what's up because, you know, we know what's up. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just just don't think that you could do that because it's not, it's not cute, you know? <laughs> it's not yeah. cute to think you can manipulate you know, I mean, because you, you you've that. had a, you've had a, an experience, right? So you, you know, like you, you have that spidey sense where it's like, you know, I, I yeah. can sense somebody trying to re-exploit me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it, it sucks that you have to delve into those senses, but that's what you, 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 you know, and, and it's a, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time, but at the, you know, at the same time, it's like, it's unfortunate that you have to explore that realm of, you know, I, uh, I, this feels off, you know yeah. what I mean? And like I say, God don't do ugly and we'll pray. And it's been amazing to see God work to, I could show you all my prayer journal, but God will answer the prayers to X, Y, and Z. And yeah, so we're not playing. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, lady, so much for uh, giving me your testimony, as well as uh, providing everybody that new, uh, hopefully a new perspective that, you know, you, when you are, are exploring the options of helping a, an organization, a ministry that combats human T word, uh, you, you need to have a perspective and enter it with a renewed sensitivity that you cannot just say that you're going to, you know, it's, it can, and it can be, I mean, we're talking about, you know, this, the, the situation you guys were in was, it, it was promised a, a big amount, right? It was, there was a lot of amounts thrown around, but it can be as little as like, I'm going to take you to lunch. I'm going to take you, I'm going to take you to the mall and buy you a purse or a new shirt. you right. And then you never follow through with it. It can be as disappointing, just as detrimental and disappointing as a big amount for something small. So people yep. need to be uh, sensitive when you, when you offer that to a survivor or an Amen. organization. You got it. Awesome. Well, thank you, uh, ladies. And where can, where can people find you if they want to support you and uh, they want to give to your cause and help out with any future survivor needs? One's purpose.com O N E S purpose.com or uh, on Facebook, One's Purpose, on Instagram, One's underscore purpose, or call us, 541-221-3448. We answer the phone at all hours, and, you know, we're not like the 800 number. We actually get things done. Awesome. <laughs> and That's it. We're not, uh, you know, we don't have all the other resources. All the bells and whistles. Yeah, you no, know, it's girl. understandable. It's a it's a busy industry. So, uh, I appreciate yeah. you, ladies. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry uh, for you know on the behalf of those that d did you wrong. Uh, but yeah, guys, if you would like to support this organization and what they are doing in Oregon, uh, you can find them at the uh, listed website as well as social media links. Thank you, guys, so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you, Nat. Uh, we love you too. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, Rhonda. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for tuning in to Unravel with Natalie Denise. Please give this podcast five stars.